Most DJs stick with the default settings in Rekordbox, but what if changing just a few of them could save you hours of frustration and make your DJ performances better? In this video, I'm going to show you 12 settings in version 7 that will simplify DJing and boost your workflow. Having a track with no cue points is worse than being Robert Mugabe's optician. So what if you could get Rekordbox to automatically add a hot cue or memory cue at the start of a track when you analyze it? To get to preferences, go to the top right and click the cog icon. Once you're in, head to the analysis section and then cue analysis tab. There are a few different things we need to set here to get it working. The first is to turn on intelligent cue creation. If you're savvy enough to not have paid for a record box plan, then the only option here will be manual, which of course makes no sense because it's automatic. Underneath, you'll see an option for cue type. This is where you can choose whether Rekordbox should set a memory cue or a hot cue on the first beat of the track. Personally, I find memory cues more useful here. That's because I use them more as structural indicators for the track as opposed to hot cues, which I use more for performance. But I'm not your mum, so do what you want. Finally, under cue setting, tick the set to 1.1 bars option. The next time you analyze a track, Rekordbox will set either a memory cue or a hot cue on the first beat of the first bar of the track. In a previous video, I gave AlphaFator some shit for removing this so they could upsell their automatic cue points. But it turns out they didn't. And probably the right thing to do at this point would be to apologize. Big is beautiful, and I apply that to my interfaces as well. On a small laptop screen, Rekordbox can be harder to see than a bogey that's been wiped on a skyscraper. So to make everything more readable at a distance, there's a few options I like to change. Go to View and then make sure you're in the Display Type tab. Crank up the font size to your preference. And for even more visibility, you can make it bold too. The next setting is a bit of a trade-off between the amount of tracks you can see on your screen at once and the legibility. I personally find the line height a bit cramped by default, so I like to jack it up a bit to give it some more breathing room. You can do that by dragging the line space slightly. Slider. Because Rekordbox tries to cater to every single type of DJ in one program, there's often a load of stuff on the interface that you don't actually need. And to DJ well, we need focus, just like Aloy. One of the best ways to deal with this is to remove anything that's not part of your workflow. In View and then Layout, you'll see the Media Browser section. This determines what tiny, ugly icons you'll see on your left-hand navigation. Untick anything you don't need from the list of services here. For example, I don't use Tidal anymore, so I'm going to get rid of that. This really helps tidy up the Music Browser and means you can get to your tracks a lot faster, particularly when you're working across different sections. Shout outs to the cheapskates. Even if you don't pay for Rekordbox, it will still leave an annoying Q analysis playlist in your media browser. Until recently, I thought you couldn't get rid of this, but it turns out you can. In View and then Layout, you can untick the Q analysis playlist option to banish it back to the hell from whence it came. If there's anything more exciting than putting vertical lines on visual representations of audio, I don't want to hear about it. But more often than not, Rekordbox gets these lines wrong, meaning you have to spend precious time sorting it out. As I covered in a recent video, version 7.07 .07 got a new high-precision beat grid analysis mode. It's sort of like the slow cooker of analysis modes. It takes ages, but the end result is more moist. Hop to the analysis section and then make sure you're on the track analysis tab. At the top, you'll find a new toggle. Use high precision beat grid analysis. The high precision mode works with all the settings below it. So the new algorithm will apply to either normal or dynamic analysis modes, the BPM range you've selected and the track analysis settings. If you're a good DJ and you analyze your tracks in plenty of time before your gigs, you can just leave this on permanently but it's proper slow, even on my M4 Pro MacBook. So in most cases, I leave it off and only use it for the 1 to 99% of tracks Rekordbox messes up. And by the way, if you like this kind of DJ library tip, you'll probably like my newsletter. You sign up for free in the description. Improving your track workflow is important. It gives you more time to focus on finding great music in the first place and playing it. But the default options in Rekordbox aren't actually optimized that well for DJing. There are a few settings that make Rekordbox almost pleasant to use when playing. Feel like your eyes are getting fat? You might be eating too many waveforms. Swap your KFC family bucket with a corn on the cob with this next setting. Under View and then Display Type, you'll see an option called Full or Preview Waveform. By default, this is set to Full, meaning you'll see both the top half and the bottom half of the waveform in your playlists. For me, the main use of the waveform in the playlist is just to give a quick indication of the structure of a track and give me an idea where the cue points are, so I don't actually need to see the full thing in there. And because it's trying to cram so much detail in a small place, it becomes a bit rubbish. If you change this option to Half Waveform, then 
record box, as you might expect, will just show the top half of the waveform. You'll still get most of the same information, but because it's showing less in the same space, it's a lot easier to read. And a bonus tip here, you can make this waveform even bigger using an alternative view in the playlist. Click the little bullet point icon to switch to the large view. You know that feeling when you're waiting for your cue point to hit, so you can begin your transition. Will you press play in time? Will they like your new Tech House bootleg? And why haven't you subscribed yet? You can get rid of that nervous but sexy energy with a quick rethink of how you prep your tracks. In View Display Type, there's a very cool option called Beat Count Display. By default, it's set to current position. Just above the waveform in the deck player, Recordbox will display the current beat and bar position. This is kind of helpful for track prep, but less useful for DJing. A much more useful option is the count to next memory cue setting. You can choose either bars or beats here, depending on how you like to mix. What this option will do is display how long it is till the next memory cue from the current point you're playing in the track. So you know exactly how long you've got to plan your transition and get your phrasing in time. If you haven't dabbled with memory cues yet, then in my opinion, this is one of their best use use cases. And memory cues are the only way to get this functionality on an equipment that doesn't have an in-jog display, something like the FLX4. I'm a big believer that things should look like the things they're trying to control. You have eight square performance pads on your controller, so surely the best way to show this in your DJ software would be a set of... Oh, it's a f***ing list. Go into view and then layout and find pad mode. Change the toggle to customize and then select pad display. You'll now see your hot cues, pad effects, and other modes actually reflect the things that are on your controller. My middle finger is now an Olympic power lifter because of the amount of times I've right clicked on cue points to set a color. Having a color coded system for your cues is super useful to have a consistent system across your library. You can know instantly what cue represents what just based on what it looks like. So I've been doing this manually ever since I started using Recordbox. Red for drops, orange for vocals, and so on. That is until I realized Recordbox could have just done that for me automatically, saving me hours, f sake. Under View, Color, you'll see an option called Hot Cue Color. By default, this is set to CDJ, which loosely translated means make everything f green. But there are actually a number of built-in color schemes, each more ugly than the last. By choosing one of these schemes using the dropdown, Recordbox will always apply the same colors to the same Hot Cue slots. So if you always put your drops on hot cue slot 3, it'll always be the same colour. Instant consistency with no effort. And if you want to, you can still manually override the colours. A common way to set cues is have a few leading up to the drop, as opposed to just having one at the start of a track. So why not have your decks ready to go at your first cue point as soon as you load it in? Go to Controller, Deck and find the Load section. Tick the Playback Starts at Memory slash Hot Cue nearest to the beginning of a track. Catchy. With this option on, as soon as you load the track, it will instantly jump to whichever cue is nearest the beginning. If you like to mix fast, then this option is essential. If you feel like your transitions often sound muddy, the problem might be your EQing. There are actually two EQ modes available in Recordbox. You can find them in Controller, Mixer, and then EQ. The first mode, the stupidly named EQ mode, cuts the frequency up to minus 24 dB. That means it will be reduced, but not completely cut out. Isolator mode will cut the frequency entirely when it's at the maximum. Ultimately, it's down to personal preference, but isolator mode can work really well when you completely want to cut out something like the bass leading up to a drop so it hits harder, or when you're dealing with two tracks that have conflicting frequencies. Looking back over your old sets is a great way to remember cool transitions, get old track lists, or stroke your ego rather than stroking your... Recordbox keeps every set you've ever played in the history section. The problem is, if you mix fast, Recordbox won't realise that you've actually played a track or not, and therefore it won't end up in this history playlist. You can alter the threshold at which Recordbox considers a track played by going to Advanced and then Browse and finding Playback Time Setting. By default, this is set to 31 seconds, meaning a track has to have been playing for 31 seconds to be added to your history playlist. This might work for boring progressive house where you've got really long blends. But in a D&B set, you might get through 60 tracks in that time and none of them will be recorded. I like to bring this down to around 25 seconds. This is usually enough to catch most tracks without capturing the ones that have just been cut in very briefly. But it's not just changing a few settings that will help you make the biggest difference to your track prep and DJing. In this video, I show you three record box changes that will completely transform how you think about your music library.